Aloha and welcome to Life Journaling in Dash. We'll explain <laughs> June 26th, the year is 2022. And we're your hosts. This is Yvella. I'm David. I'm looking, we're going to be reading today from Jonah chapters 1, 2, 3, and 4. Also, 2 Timothy chapter 2. And I say Life Journaling in Dash. Um, Dash has gone away, but the idea of making the most of your dash for Jesus has remained with us. So when we say life journaling and dash, we're talking about on your gravestone when you die or grave marker, if you have one, it's gonna say the date you were born, the dash and the day you die. And we're trying to make the most of our dash time for God. So that's why I'm kind of chuckling about life journaling and dash. Today, I'm calling this one, follow the leader. But I'll explain that in a moment, too. Dear, would you open us with a word of prayer here in Plano, Texas? <laughs> Still having trouble remembering where we are? I started to say Dallas. It's North Texas. So, thank you, Lord Jesus, for being with us. Thank you for protecting us while we were on the road. Um, several close calls, but Lord, you were there the whole time. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for guiding us, and thank you for giving us the opportunity every day to read your word and to be instructed by it. We ask that uh, our words help to encourage others. Amen. Amen. What do you mean, close calls? No, I just remember the the last track, the guy in that semi, you were very wise, and you didn't try to pass him, but... He was going over the middle line, and every time you thought, okay, it's a clear way, and there's plenty of room on the left side of the shoulder, I'm going to pass him. And every time you went to pass him, he sped up and matched yeah, his I, speed. Yeah, I wasn't on the shoulder of the road or anything. Right. Like Let's no. be clear about that. We're going down a two-lane highway. But you made sure if something happened, you had... Yeah, so we're going down the two-lane highway, and the first time I went past him, he matched my speed. And I thought, okay, then I backed off. And then when I tried to do it again, because he wasn't going that fast, he started swaying into our lane. And right. I just thought, it's not worth it. We're gonna just drop back. And we always say, we're gonna do our own game. And then half an hour later or something like that, um, we were able to safely get past him and never saw him again, but I wasn't going to play his game. Right. And I'm not saying there were close, close. I'm just saying that there were um, we saw, non-intelligent people on the road. Yeah, we saw a lot. We traveled a lot of miles this last week, and we saw a lot of different accidents that we were not a part of, but we prayed for. And a lot of dead deer, sadly. Yeah. So, so what did you write about? Follow fo the leader? Follow the leader. So switching gears here, I'm pulling from 2 Timothy chapters 3 and 4, where it says... Join me in suffering like a good soldier. You mean verses three and four? Yeah. What did I say? Chapters. No. Okay. So let me switch gears and focus and follow the leader. That's the title. Second Timothy, and I'm pulling from chapter two, verses three and four. So again, I say to you, join me in suffering. <laughs> Like a good soldier of Christ Jesus, no one serving as a soldier gets entangled in civilian affairs, but rather tries to please his commanding officer. Hmm. Observation. In this letter, we hear how we are to stay focused on the commands of God. We are to work hard and follow the leader, and not other people or other things. If we stick with him on earth, we will also be with him in heaven. My application as we do so, scripture, observation, application, followed by a prayer. How will I be made different by what I have read today? This is a reminder that following the news is not as important as following God. Many people say they know who God is, but then live a life that's not matched up with God's commandments. I wanna make sure I wake up, read and listen to God's scripture, and then go about my life. I do not want a person who lives, I do not want to be a person who lives their life and then fits God in just when they have time or just when they have an issue or an idea that matches up to it. So I want to put God first, wake up, have time, 
that appointment with God and then go about my life. I don't want to be the other way where, oh, I've got 30 minutes, I'll put God in. Or, oh, it's Sunday, I'm going to go to church. Don't want to be that kind of guy. My prayer, Lord, help me to put you first, not just on Sundays, but every day. Help me to stand firm in your way when the word says to do something, when the world says to do something else. Amen. Amen. It's so, very meaningful. So our, our leader is God. Follow the leader. Well, people have to pick their leader, but for me, yes, it's the big G O D. Um, I wrote from Jonah chapter 4, verse 1, that to Jonah this seemed very wrong and he became angry. My observation God told Noah to go to Nineveh and tell them to repent. Jonah did not want to go to Nineveh. The soldiers were ruthless and the town was filled with wickedness, idolatry, and evil. Jonah could have been afraid for his life because while the soldiers were re uh, rewarded by the king according to the number of heads of enemies that they brought to him. However, Jonah also knew God would forgive them. In fact, he told God um, in verse two of chapter four, this is why I was so quick to flee to Tarshish. I knew that you are gracious and compassionate God, slow to anger and abounding in love, a God who relents from sending calamity. Jonah hated the people of Nineveh and had already judged the people and did not want them to be forgiven by God. However, God had a different plan. Even though the people were sinning, God had compassion and wanted to give them a chance to turn to him. There are many lessons in this book of Jonah. One, you cannot hide from God. Two, God loves everyone no matter how much they have sinned. Three, God wants everyone to have a relationship with him. Four, do not pass judgment on others. And five, we need to see people through the eyes of God. My application, how will I be changed by what I read today? God loves everyone and wants everyone to have a personal relationship with him. God wants everyone to spend eternity with him. When I see other people, do I look at them through the eyes of God? When I see someone who does not know God, do I have the same compassion for them as God? It just dawned on me that new buzzword, mindfulness, which means being present where you are, being aware, aware of your surroundings. I need to be mindful of my surrounding. It never dawned on me until today that while someone is cutting my hair or doing my nails or eating across the room and I see them, that I should say a prayer for them, for them to have a personal relationship with God. I need to see my environment more clearly and see souls that God love, that God loves. I need to focus on making a positive change in God's kingdom by praying for others. Amen. It was kind of like a, oh. So my prayer, thank you, Lord, for the aha moment today. I do not feel like you are condemning me by not realizing this sooner, but I feel like you are opening my eyes through the story of Jonah, how to be more effective for your kingdom. Thank you for teaching me through your word. Amen. I think we need that right now. We need encouragement and we need to encourage others because you see what's going on in the world. Uh, the Supreme Court justices just overturning Roe versus Wade. You see different people having struggles because they don't have money for food or gas. You have inflation, you have all these different terminals and in times you're gonna see things like that, rumors of war. So we do need to encourage each other and it's free to pray for somebody across the room and well, they just might need it. Well, the other thing too is just, even if I'm sitting there at Costco, eating my in line, hot dog. You're, you're really good about praying for people while you're in line. I've seen you at the DMV. Yeah, well, but that, okay, I have done that. The Department then, of Motor Vehicles for the people in Africa and India that are watching this. But it never dawned on me while I'm sitting there, looking over there and seeing that lady with the three children yesterday and saying 
Lord, I don't know if she knows you. Where was this? At Costco. Oh. And, and saying a prayer for them. It just never occurred to me. It, it never occurred to me while well, I'm getting my hair cut and we're talking about different things. Just to say a silent prayer if it doesn't come up, you know, in the conversation or even pray, Lord, give me an opportunity to be a witness for you. It just never occurred to me until today. Because when, you don't know them doesn't mean you can't pray for them. Right. But it's just like this today when I'm reading this about Jonah and God saying, I love these people, you know, I have a heart for them. And Jonah, you cared more about this weed that was giving you shade than you did about <laughs> these people. And True. so it just said, oh, I, I can pray for these people. Tomorrow, we can do some more reading and some more praying as we look at 2 Kings chapter 13 and 14, 2 Chronicles, and also 2 Timothy chapter 3. And that's and, tomorrow. And that's 2 Chronicles 25. Yes. Thank you for sharing that. I'll go ahead and close this out in prayer. Father God, thank you so much for visiting with us each and every day. Thank you for the many blessings that you've bestowed upon us. And may we be fruitful and do your will here while we're still here on earth. Guide us and protect us. Amen. Amen.